There are many things that God may have imparted our lives with as a result of the knowledge of God. But until we are broken, it will not come out. It will not come out at all. The Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. 2 Corinthians verse 7. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. It is in this earthen vessel. But it's, it has to be broken for it to show forth. I can be telling people as they are looking at me, hmm, I am a gentle woman. No? I, I don't, I'm even very quiet. That is a statement, Abby. If it is going to be proved, I have to be broken for this to flow out of my life. I remember in the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 2. See what God did to the children of Israel to bring out what was in their hearts. Because of what was in their hearts, the journey of few days turned to 40 years. The Bible says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in your heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. Did you see what God did? Are you seeing it? He took them through the wilderness to humble them, to prove them, and to find out for them to see what was in their hearts. Mm -hmm. He does the same thing today through the process of brokenness. Brokenness experience, we must pass through it. And it makes God to see and make us also to see and allow people around to see what is actually in our, in our, in our lives. The stuff that we are made of. You know, I have seen some people before when people annoy them and they become angry. And especially when they are narrating what happened. He said, when he said that thing, ah, I said, today you will see the redness of my eyes. Oh, today you will know the stuff that I am made of. Actually, situations and circumstances will be arranged around our lives to show the stuff that we are made of. To also show whether we are growing, to show whether we are improving, to show whether we are following after Christ. May the Lord help us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, may the Lord help us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. God uses this brokenness to release the grace of God that is in us. That anybody who come across us will not escape the influence of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 14 and 15. It says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savour of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. There is an aroma that will come out of our lives. That we either be bringing, you know, that will be a server unto Christ, and it will preach a message even to those who are also perishing. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brokenness is not a sweet experience. But going through it, we bring out what is in us. Because when God catches us as we get born again, he begins to work on our lives. And we will be moving from one level to another. A little here, a little there. Line after line, we keep growing. Even Jesus will put us to test and to show what and what we have gained and grown up in. You will remember that in the book of Judges, chapter 16, in the book of Judges, chapter 16, I mean, sorry, chapter 7 from verse 16, but let me just paraphrase it for us. You will remember when Gideon was to go and fight. Examination had been done for the men who came out. Eventually, they were reduced to 300 men. And these 300 men, he gave them, he gave them picture. 
he gave them picture. And inside that picture, they were supposed to put light inside it. And he told them to carry the picture. You know, when the light, lamp or light is inside a picture, outside there will still be darkness. Nobody will see anything. So he gave them instruction that when they will hear him give instruction, then everybody will break the picture. So you can imagine if you are looking at a corner where you feel that soldiers are and you are seeing darkness, then you just heard a command and then all the picture is broken and you are suddenly see light. Of course, they overcame their enemy, but they could not see light until the picture is broken. I am saying it again, that no matter the light of God that you are carrying, he cannot touch other people until you are broken. The virtues that we read about, that we are supposed to go and show, even to the whole world, after we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to light, cannot show forth until we are broken. May the Lord help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I know that before you can break something, you look for something to break. You look for either a stone or a piece of iron or what I call hammer, even to break it. So God uses different kinds of hammer even to break us so that we will see what is inside us and then we will be able to make amends or we go on. He uses the word of God even to break us. I don't know whether it has happened to you before. You either you are listening to a message or you are reading the word of God or you sleep and you wake up with a scripture in your mouth and you read the scripture. It breaks you. It breaks you. I remember when I was in school and I was desiring something that a friend had and it became a prayer point. It became a serious prayer point and I was saying, God, give me this thing. If you have money like this, this is what I will, I will buy. And I was really designing it. And I was presenting it even as a petition. I woke up one day and I said, Hebrews 13, Hebrews 13, 5. Hebrews 13, 5. I did not even open it because I thought it is where they said marriage is honorable, <laughs> you know, things. But he kept coming. He kept coming. When I went to read it, and I saw, let your conversation be without covetousness. I said, eh? Ah, and be content with such things as ye have. Ah, for ye has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hmm. Is that one not showing my heart? I said, eh? So this thing that I'm doing is covetousness. So God is saying, I will never forsake you. I will never leave you alone many years ago. The Lord can confront us with a scripture. The Lord can break us even with a word. He even said, is my word not like a hammer? You will hear the word of God like this and you will be crying. The word of God will correct error. The word of God is, has been, he said, is written by inspiration and is profitable for direction, for teaching, for instruction, for rebuking, for reproof. There is a profit in the word of God. But before it does anything to us, it must break us so that the word of God can travel through all the bones and marrows, through every corner of our lives, our mind, our soul, to do the work that it has been sent to do. Because it will not return to God void. Let the word of God work for you. Seek for the word of God. Desire the word of God. Don't hinder the word of God from flowing through your life. Because this word of God had been tried. In fact, even God is living by this word. And it is the word of God that has been given power and power to change people. God will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Your husband can be a hammer that God will use to break you. Because some of us, when we got married, all of us are Christian, flowing, speaking in tongues and everything, heaven bound, you know, tongue talking, binding the devil and everything. You would think you are okay until you begin to receive some hammers that will show you who you really are. Some instruction will come, bam, like this. Ah, you will even surprise yourself the way you will respond. You will surprise everybody around the way you will respond. You would think that, ah, I am okay. Because see, 
So is it submission? That's what sister, one sister was telling me. He said, she said, it's submission. Eh? Allah, until now, me love one nick by. If it is a matter, oh, she said, she married you. If it is a matter of submission, you know, God, God has helped me. And I know he, he also will not have any problem. When he, when he gets there, I say, ha. Ah. I said, any spiritual instruction, pray and pray very well. There is an enemy that does not want you to obey God's instruction. I said, you don't know what submission is until you become a wife. Eh? When you are sitting down and you want to remain sitting down, they say, stand up. You now see everything inside of you. Oh, mama, you will want to give reason why you should sit down. I mean, if they say sit down, you want to stand up, you want to give a reason why you want to stand up. And God will be saying, keep quiet. Some instructions will come. Everybody, even, even those who are deaf, but she must say, Aditi Gomo, Pekini, correct. And for you, Gomo, Pekini is not correct. And yet, you are supposed to obey. In that day, will you not need the grace of God? Will you not need the grace of God even to do such a thing? God will show us mercy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the days when I was still teaching, that I bought something from school because it was cheap and we bought it in bulk. Ah, I thought that my husband would praise me for taking such a decision. I just got home and he said, who told you to buy this? Ah, and I said, oh, Dingo gone. I thought that she would look at me as a virtuous, he would look at me as a virtuous woman, things like that. The next instruction I will hear is go and return it. Ah, go and return it. I will I, all the things that were flying through my mind, I will I tell my colleagues. Will I say my husband said I should go and return it? Because I made everybody to know that we needed this thing and sincerely we needed it. But he has spoken. He said I should go and return. So quickly I changed my prayer. And I said, God, I will return it. <laughs> Let me see somebody to buy it off me. So when I got back to the staff room, I said, does anybody want to buy this thing? Ah, they said, but I saw, I th we thought you said you need it. I said, do you want to buy? Just come and buy. They bought it and I collected the money. I returned back home. We still didn't have that thing in the house. We now went down the streets of Onikolobo to go and buy that thing in a more expensive manner. But there was peace in the house. I was able to sleep in peace. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when they are bringing something into the staff, I will say, ah, let me not buy. But there was this day I said, God, you said the virtuous woman will go to a place where things are cheaper. For how long are we going to be buying things in an expensive manner? Will you not touch the heart of my husband? Will you not talk to him? Will you not? I was just praying. So I went to those people. I said, let me take one. Let me go and show it to him. Maybe he will agree for us to buy. And when I got home, wisdom demands that I do not even quickly go and show it to him. Wisdom demands that I should watch the you know, the countenance before I presented it again. At the end of the day, when I presented it, I said, I have not bought it. I just want to come and show you. Should we buy it? He said, this is where I have problem with you. This kind of a thing that is very good. Why should you buy one? Eh? Why should you buy one? You should buy six. Ah. He's the same person, no? He has not changed, though. I didn't change husband. But what happened to me? What did I do? I prayed. What did I do? I prayed. Even me, I wanted to say, she six or two six for Dubai. Are we going to tie all the resources on this particular thing? He said, so tomorrow, you go and buy more and bring six. I learned a lesson. And what is the lesson? I should ask, Abby, I am under authority. I should be submissive. And until it is approved, are you getting me? I will still be wrong. So I prayed. I prayed to the authority over his own life. And God went ahead. So you cannot even say you can do it alone. It was not easy for me. Oh. You know why it was not easy for me? Because it was me bringing in salary for us to spend in the house. So I felt, ah, ah, should I not have a say over this uh, money? Eh? So it was all these things were going on within me. 
several instructions that will come. God will use your husband, even as a hammer, to break you, to know what is in your hand. In those days and in the days when the hammer will be coming, don't resist the hammer. God will help us in the name of Jesus. I want you to know that there is a hand behind the hammer. No hammer handles itself by itself. So it is God that uses any hammer he wants to use to break you to see what is in your, in your. Even our children can be used like that. Wonderful children. They can ask some probing questions, questions that can provoke you. And when it is provoking you, it is bringing out what is in you. It is bringing out what, what is in you. I don't know if I've told you before that one of my daughters, I mean, our daughter said, if we say this thing now, mommy will shout. Ah, I said, do I shout? Even that one that I said, do I shout? It was the help of the Holy Spirit. Because naturally me, I will say, do you talk to mommy like that? Is that not rude? How can you be saying mommy is shouting? But because the Holy Spirit wanted to help me, I said, do I shout? Ah, even those who are, who, who the matter does not concern. All of them say, eh, so you don't know. Then they, they, they began drama. They said, when you enter the house like this, eh, eh, what is the meaning of this? Who put this one here? For God's sake, how many times do you want me to? They, and I was watching drama of myself. I did not know that that's who I was, even to them. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Some provoke, thought provoking question that they will ask How can you be? How can you be eating apple? And your child is saying, Mommy, what are you eating? Eh? What will you feel like saying? Are you, are you blind? Are you not seeing? Have you passed that test? Hey, Damilo, have you passed that test? What was his question? What are you eating? What are you supposed to say? Apple. Even if you pass that one and you say it is apple, you say, Mommy, is it sweet? Eh, eh. It is not sweet. <laughs> if it is not sweet, will I be eating it? I'm asking us, is that a correct answer? Uh -huh. So all they say, hey, hey, hey. I don't want to shout, but you see these children, they can provoke somebody. When they provoke you, it is what is inside that will come out. So you see, we need to walk on our lives. We need to walk on our inner man. So in the day when you will write exam, may we not disappoint God in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your housemaids, your house help, disciples, disciples, we disappoint. I mean, we provoke you. People in the church, they will do many things, even around. They are like hammers. Oh, what will you, what will you say? We have disciples in the house, and we traveled. One of the two of them went to take key, even to 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 warm the car, eh? And as they were warming the car, it is the, it is not automatic. The one that is parked with gear one, and they started the car, even with gear one, and the car jumped. And it was at a time when children in the compound were passing. And it pinned, it pinned one of them against the wall of our room. And they carried the girl to the hospital. And the girl died. So, <laughs> all my head was turning like this. And it is like, oh, oh, oh. I remember that day when I was going up and down at the Ibarra police station. I didn't know I could respond like that. I was just going to Ibarra Baptist Church again to the toilet, and I would come back again. Because it was dawning on me that they are going to lock them up. It dawned on me that many, many things were going to happen. Because God has said we should also raise people. You, are you getting what I'm saying? In recent times, it dawned on me that Paul said that I may know him. And, if, and it's the power of his resurrection. That one is good, Abby. And the fellowship of his suffering. And the fellowship of his suffering. We must partake of it too. You will be wondering, how did Jesus go through his own? How did he cope with, with betrayal? How did he cope with this one and with that one? Everybody will pass through their own experience. It is at that time you know what is in your heart. Or maybe somebody did something wrong and you see God saying, It is you. If somebody did something wrong, God is not coming to tell me, Oh, she shared, don't you you want? If you have done what you ought to do, that person will not respond like that. God will show us mercy. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. They saw Jesus, they said, where did you get these wounds? He said, in the house of my friend. In the house of my friend. If you want to follow Jesus and you want to be useful, even unto God, you want to be relevant, you want to be able to fulfill mandate, you must be empowered even to go through things. The Lord will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hamas will come. I am praying that <clears throat> when our own Hamas will come, let it not be that what Jesus will be saying is rottenness. Let it not be that he will see anger. Let it not be that malice is what will welcome the armor. Let it not be that jealousy, lies, pride, hypocrisy will be what God will see. Or unforgiveness, or sexual immorality, many of those things, they will be in us. It is when the hammer comes that it brings out even what is in us. God will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And God is checking. Today, one of the prayers we pray is that, God, let your hammer come quickly. Did you hear me? Let your hammer come quickly and work so fast so that I can quickly be broken. Because it is as I get broken that I can be useful to God. Because I will be correcting errors. I will be seeing who I am. Ah. You know, there was, a, there was a time in those early days of marriage, my husband would say something like this, ah, they do me, ah, do me. And those words will be coming, the words will be coming, it will get to my mouth like this. Sometimes I will need to hold the mouth. Hmm. Hmm. The Bible says if you offend not in word, Abby, so let me just keep quiet. But inside me, eh, inside me I will be boiling. Then I will now get to the quiet, my quiet time in the morning, and God will say, you are an angry woman. Anger rests in the bosom of a fool. On, people are looking at me and say, Sister Bola, she's very quiet. Look at all the things that were said to her. She didn't even say a word. Very quiet. I wish I am like her. But in heaven, what is my repository? What is my repository? Foolish woman. They say, anger rests in the bosom of fool. And I'll be crying again. Oh, God, help me. You have not helped me enough. Help me. So when somebody does anything to me, and it's painful, it is not that person that is the problem. The problem is so, somebody can still say something, somebody can still do something that it will pain me. It's like, God, you have not helped me enough. So that I can focus attention on my life and work out my salvation with fear and trembling. God will deliberately arrange hammers around your life. It can be people in your place of work. It can be Okada, Okada, Okada man. Eh? All of us can be holy in church, oh, saying God bless you, God bless you. But when you jump on that road, eh, people will drive off for you. People, people will splash muddy water on you. Then we will know the kind of person you are on the inside. I am praying that God will feel free over our lives to use the instrument, whatever instrument he wants to use, to make me a woman, to make you a woman that is ever empowered to fulfill divine mandate in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That is when the virtues of God can flow out. So be godly hmm, in your behavior. Be truthful and kind. Be disciplined and self-controlled. All these fruits of the Spirit, they are not bought in the market. And it is as we grow in the knowledge of the word of God that we will be transformed even into his likeness. God will help us in Jesus' name. I said we must be prepared. I remember in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 7. 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 7. The Bible mentions something in the days when Solomon was building the temple. 1 Kings 6, 7 says, And, in, and the house, when it was in building, was built of stone made ready before it was brought thither. Of stone made ready where? In the quarry before it was brought thither. So that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron hard in the house while it was in building. Sisters, do you see why we need to really prepare ourselves before we enter marriage? Do you see why we really need to prepare ourselves very well before the Lord before we enter the day? 
before you go embark on a particular project. God does not want noise. He wants everything. I can imagine the building. Maybe they are bringing stones from the quarry. They have already shaped them. They have sharpened them so that they will just be arranging them to fit in into the side. To No noise. There is so many noise in church. So much noise in the family. So much noise in the places where God is sending us to. Because we ran away from the place of preparation. We did not allow him to trim down all in that needs to be trimmed down. God will handle our appetites. He will handle everything preparing us for what he wants to use us for. May the Lord help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. And in the days of preparation, you don't look at another person. You don't compare yourself with another person. Because... <laughs> You don't know where that person is going. I normally give this analogy that if we go to the market and you buy tomatoes and you wash the tomatoes and you separate them, you cut some tomatoes and you use them to garnish salad. Very beautiful, red, good to look at on the table. And then you now cut another, take another set of tomato and you put it inside grinder, inside blender. Eh? The tomato will say, what is my offense? Why are they subjecting me to this kind of, you know, wahala? Look at the one on the table. Why can't I be like that? And after blending, you now put oil on the fire again. You make it hot. You now pour it. Ah, hey, this is another wahala. What did I do for God's sake? But by the time it is fried and it becomes correct stew, we, it will last for many days. But the one that is used to garnish salad, for how long will it last? There are some people that are not going far. So you don't need to compare yourself with them because you are passing through a fire. The fire will refine you. The fire will make you better and desirable and usable even before the Lord. The Lord will give us help in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So we must not dodge dealings. There are dealings that God will expose us to in order to empower us. I remember one time somebody offended me, one of the sisters so close to me, and then she did something to me. I can't even remember what she did, but it was very painful. So I told myself, Shadura and Shamila or church you. Eh? Let me just come, do what I need to do. Let everybody do their own. I don't want anybody to come and enjoy me again. And God was watching me. What God did was to push me, pull me aside. He healed my broken heart, healed my wound, and I bounced back again. I could still sing. I could still worship God. Just looking at everybody, keeping them at arm's length. Some people will want to come closer and say, <laughs> once beaten, twice shy. Please, which chapter and verse is that word? Eh, what I just said now. Once beaten, twice shy. What verse of the scripture is it? Is it there? Ah, so I held on to it, gone. So one day, as I was also praying, God came and said, don't ask me for grace. Don't ask me for help again. Don't ask me for mercy. And I said, ah, what have I done? He said, if I give them to you, he said, what do you need them for? That was the question. He said, if I give them to you, they are for my people. I'm talking about people that are making me to cry. I'm talking about people that are offending me every day. God is calling them his people. Are they not his people? He says, so if I'm giving you grace, and I'm giving you help, and I'm showing you mercy, it is for them. So we do not have any relevance. Abi, to, re to receive empowerment, if we just want to consume it upon our own lust. So if I just want to keep to myself, not relating with people, how will it flow forth? Is it just to consume it and be there and say, I carry grace, I carry anointing, I carry that one? God said, don't ask me again. So I needed to go back before God and say, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to be uh, abandoned uh, kingdom and instruments. I don't want you to pack me aside. I am ready to let go. I am ready to forgive everybody. I am, and God was asking me, what is it that they have done for me that they have not done for Jesus? Yet he forgave everybody. So if I do not live and behave like Jesus, I have not started at all. And some of us are here. They are saying, ah, this particular offense is an unforgivable one. No. These days people are talking of irreconcilable differences. So they are going to be 
he recorded, said, no, 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 it can't be resolved. This matter, no, 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 don't talk about it again. Ah, uh -uh. and we want to be useful to God. And we want to be relevant in his kingdom. It's not going to work together. So forgiveness must flow. We must be willing to let go. In fact, if you do not forgive people who have offended you, unforgiveness is also hanging over your own life. Because we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Forgive me as I have forgiven others. So if we do not forgive people, if you do not forgive your husband, if you do not forgive your children, if you do not forgive your neighbor, if you do not forgive your colleague, and people around who have offended us, some of us, our parents have offended us. Some of us, our in-laws have offended us. Our neighbors have offended us. Our colleagues at work and in the business place. As a, mm. So we started keeping malice in church. Sophisticated way of keeping malice. Good morning, good morning. No more, no less. And God is seeing our hearts. How can we, how can we fulfill this mandate? How will what is in us flow onto other lives? So we must deal with ourselves. We must allow the grace of God that is given unto us even to flow onto others. We must learn to forgive and let go so that we also can be forgiven. God will show us mercy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Then I need to let you know that when God is sending anybody on an errand, he monitors them. He watches over your growth. And you in particular, that's exactly what God will do. I want us to look at the case study of somebody that Jesus was monitoring in John chapter 1. In John chapter 1. We know that in John chapter 1, the Bible says Jesus was passing by and John was introducing Jesus. He introduced Jesus the first time. His disciples had. He introduced Jesus the second time. And the Bible says two of his disciples, they left, they left John and they went after Jesus. When they heard him speak, that is in verse 37. And Jesus looked at them, what do you seek? Of course, by the time we got to verse 40, the Bible says one of those two was Andrew and Simon Peter's brother. He went to look for his own brother and then he became a disciple. But look at verse 40, 43. The Bible says the day following, Jesus will go forth into Galilee and find it who? Find it who? He find it Philip and said unto him, follow me. And now Philip was of Bethsaida and the city of Andrew. Philip also find it who? Nathaniel. So it was Jesus who personally witnessed even to Philip. And he started monitoring his growth as God is monitoring your growth and my growth. Let's quickly go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Now that was in chapter 1. Several things have happened between chapter 1 and chapter 6. When they got to chapter 6, verse 1 says, After these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. And then um, the Passover, a feast of the Jews was nigh. When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said to who? He said to who? He said to Philip. It was not Peter. It was not all the disciples. He said to Philip particularly. He said, when shall we buy bread that this may eat? Hmm. Look at verse 6. The Bible says, and this, he said, to do what? To prove him. For he himself knew what he would do. Jesus is not confused, but he focused attention on Philip. He said, what, where can we get bread? Because he wanted to know what Philip knew. He wanted to find out how much of him does Philip know. Then the Bible says, Philip said, ah, hey, 200 penny worth of bread is not even enough to feed all these people. Then look at verse 8. One of the disciples, what's the name of that disciple? Andrew. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, now came up with a lad who has the solution to the problem. Are we seeing it? Did Jesus pass any comment to Philip? No. Let's look at chapter 12 of Jesus, of Philip's work, even with the Lord. I don't know which chapter you and I are now, but I know that we are moving on. 
John chapter 12, verse 20. The Bible says, And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to who? To who? To Philip, which was of the Bethsaida of Judah, I mean, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we will see Jesus. What are they asking for? We want to see Jesus. Please, what do you expect Philip to do? What do you, because there was no law that uh, nobody should go and see Jesus. Abby, they said, we want to see Jesus. What do you expect Philip to do? To take them to Jesus. But look at the next verse. The Bible says, Philip cometh and telleth Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And I was, I was wondering, I said, why did they put this in the Bible? The Bible is so detailed. Because it was Andrew who brought bread the other time. Andrew had become, who will I say he had become now? Eh? Philip was saying, ah, I want brother Andrew. I want you want woman bang bo bo ba. So this one now, let me go and tell Andrew. So Andrew and Philip, they now went to tell Jesus. There are so many times that people will be knocking on the door of our own lives too. At work, they begin to lament. They begin to tell you their problems. What are they saying? They need solution. Is that not so? And Jesus is the solution to every problem. All that they are saying is, we will see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. You say, ah, in our church, on Friday, we normally have VG. Come for that VG. Before you come, I would have told pastor. Then pastor will now show them Jesus. Please, if that is your level, keep inviting them. On. But God does not want you to remain at that level. He wants us to grow up to a level where if they meet you on the road, you will show them Jesus. If they meet you in the marketplace, we will show them who? Jesus, whom we have had encountered with, whom we are relating with every day, from whose presence we arose that day, even to go, even into the outer place. He, said, he, he, he hid behind Andrew, and God was watching. I wonder why God made it to be recorded for us. Let's look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in me, believe in God, and believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Please, what I have read that Jesus said, is it complicated? Is it complicated? It's not complicated. Then Thomas said, ah, we don't know where you are going. How can we even know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you have known me, you should have known my Father also. From henceforth, you know him and you have seen him. You know? Then Philip now said, All these, I go to prepare a place. If you have seen me, you have, show us the Father. Show us the Father and it will be okay for us. Then Jesus now responded to Philip and said, Have I been so long time with you? And you have not known me, Philip. Is that a comment of commendation? Eh? Is, it, is, it, is the Lord praising him? God was disappointed. Ah, ah, Philip, when Thomas asked his own question, you all know Thomas. Everybody knows Thomas. Don't you also know Thomas? God answered him at his level. Nobody complained. But Philip, you, I mean Philip, you. God can also say the same thing to us. Have I not been so long a time and you have not known me and he mentions our name? Because he expects us to have grown better and grown stronger. That is the reason why sometimes there will be an issue between you and your husband. It is you that God will come and meet. It has happened to me many times. I will be saying, ah, am I the only one that you are showing scripture? Am I the only one, God, that you are talking to? Can't you also talk to him? Is he not a child of God? Is he, supposed, is he supposed to be doing this kind of thing? And God will still say, you. I mean you. And he will be pointing to what he wants to point to. Because he wants to make our life better. Philip, because God knows what he has poured inside of you. God knows what labor he has put in on your behalf. 
To whom much is given, much is expected. And he's expecting, because God has divine expectation, he wants us, he wants to see things that we make, that we show that we are growing in response to all his labor and effort over our lives. In the day that we will be passing through our own tests, may we not disappoint God in Jesus' name. And if we fail, may we pick it up again and run so that we can be made better in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Dealings. God said you will go into all, beginning from where you are, go to Judea, to Jerusalem, to Samaria, and to the utmost part of the world. What did he say they should go and be? Witnesses. Witnesses. It is what you have experienced that you go and testify about. If you go and tell people and say, Jesus can heal, Jesus can deliver, these are, if anybody asks you among them and say, has he healed you before? You say, eh, actually, he has not really healed me. But I see people sharing testimony of healing. I mean, you need to come to our church, they testify of healing. In redemption, camp. so Jesus heals. How will that person <laughs> take that word? But you can imagine if somebody says there is no healing again. All those power of healing, miracle of healing is gone with Jesus when he left. And he has healed you. Can you imagine he has healed you of cancer before? He has healed you, you know, of a particular disease before, maybe ulcer. He has delivered you, even from having sharp menstrual pain every month. And God has delivered you. You have become who? A witness. By the time you begin to talk, you say, well, I don't know about you, but me. I am a recipient of the healing power of God. I used to be like this, but now, but now, but now. Just like that man who, was, who received his sight. They said, is it him or is it not him? He said, it is me. Who healed you? He said, one thing I know is that I was blind before. Now I can see. Nobody can collect that miracle from you. And the way you will say it, you say it with so much persuasion, with life backing, because you have passed through it. But you see, these are the days when we have women. They dodge dealings. They don't want encounters. Me, I no go so far. Eh? I no go bang for bread. <laughs> Me, I no go so far. You will need to pass through some experiences. I remember one time my husband traveled out. And it was time to pay school fees. And there was no money to pay school fees. I was having initial struggle before he left. Yeah, travel. Eh? We need this money. And God came. He said, I am in it. So I kept quiet. So I gave him my support and he left. But now, I'm face to face with uh, children who are going to school of no teller, no entry. No teller, no entry. So they have to be at home. Then one man of God came to our house. He said, Oh, I came to Came to greet me, Abi, Bala Shema, so he lady in English, eh, for my husband who has traveled. And he now saw the children hopping around. He said, Ah, these children didn't go to school. I said, Children, why didn't you go to school? <laughs> they said, We have not paid our fees. They said, We should not come to school without paying our fees. But we have prayed, and we know that God will provide. Because that I didn't even know what to tell the man. They hopped away again. The man said, Ah, Excuse me, Emma Binu, I'm very sorry to say this. If anybody told me outside that you too, you pass through this kind of situation, I will say it is no. Ah ah, ah ah, ah ah. Then I'm not trans came. I said, is there going to be a time that the just will stop living by faith? You may have 20,000 yesterday and be believing God for 1,000 naira today. That is God. God will never allow you to be in a place where you don't need him again. One of the children will come to me, Mommy, when I went to Wee Wee in the night, I prayed again, I prayed again. Who knows whether it was even their own faith that her God on us. But you see, they are having their own encounter. Of course, before the week ran out, the Lord provided, and they went back to school. So when you ask them to pray, they will say, God, indeed, you are the Jehovah Jireh. We called upon you and you answered us. That experience and encounter, can anybody take it away from them? Even if I've been preaching to them, God provides, God provides. He provides, we thank God. But this one, they stayed at home and everybody was praying and believing that God will provide. Don't dodge dealings. 
Don't even shield your children too from having encounters with their maker. They need it for the journey ahead. They need it to equip them. Don't pamper them. Eh? Some, some people, they have grown under us. They don't even know how to fast. Even you, you are still struggling with fasting. We are asked there are some miracles that will not happen, except if it be by what? Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. So when God is taking you through dealings, don't dodge it. Because it's, it's by doing that that people will know that you are the children of our Father in heaven. I read the scripture. Is it in Matthew? Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5. Let me see the verse now. I think it's the um, <coughs> verse, 40, verse 43. It says, Ye have heard that I have, it has been said that thou shalt love your neighbor and hate thy enemy. That was what they told them before. He said, but I say unto you, the one that is speaking now is the word himself. He said, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despisefully use you and persecute you. He now goes on to say, that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and send that rain on the just and on the unjust. These are simple, simple instructions talked in the Bible that God will be coming to check. Will you obey this one? Will you do this one? Ah, some mother in laws, eh? What they have done to some wives? Oh, wonderful. And in your mind, you are like, ah, hey, hey, God, I just thank you. Let me just make heaven. I don't want a situation where we offend anybody, so let everybody stay <laughs> in their place. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. You will not let go. God said, love them that hate you. Love your enemies. Bless them that cause you. Practically do it. Put it into practice. And let's see whether God will not arise for you. He said that ye may be the children of your father. That is how we show to people that we are the children of our Father. In that your place of work, those people you have packed aside, how will you witness to them? In the family, how will you tell them about the love of Christ? In your neighborhood, how will you show them that Jesus died for them? It has to flow out even from our lives. God will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let me also say this, that we need to be very, very careful of distraction and deceit. The devil is a deceiver. He can drain even the power that God has given unto us if we are not very, very sensitive. Was it not deceit he used for Eve? Eve was deceived. The Bible says Adam was not deceived. And when he is coming, he, com he comes with distractions. He com when the devil is coming, he does not come with a big thing and say, I am the devil and I have come to deceive you. Is that how he will come? It will come in an attractive manner. That it will take sensitivity in your spirit to make you know that this is the devil. That's why you cannot run away from being prayerful. You cannot run away from being uh, in, in intimacy with God, communing with God moment by moment. That's what we learned from Jesus. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. Whatever I see my father do, that's how I, what I do. Whatever I hear him say, that's how I judge. God is a very present help in time of trouble. You don't need to determine that I will pray to God concerning this matter when it is 9 p.m. Something is happening to you now, now, now. God has not traveled. You begin to ask him now, now, now. Holy Spirit, what do I say? Holy Spirit, if he says talk, what do I say? How do I say it? And you are saying it, and you are praying in the Spirit, help will come. Strength will come, and you will be able to overcome. Beware of the devil. He hates us with passion. He comes with distractions. He comes with deception. And they are in different shapes and sizes, even in times like this. People will want to deceive you to make you to offend God, to make you to dip your hand into iniquity. Sometimes he outrightly even kills people, kills your prayer life, kills your communion life, kills your, you know, uh, intimacy with God. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We begin to put on weight things that weigh more even than God. And God will not be happy even with that. I read the story of a man in the book of Jeremiah. Let me just paraphrase it for us. You know when they carry 
children of God into, um, okay, thank you. When they carry them into captivity, they don't normally, they don't normally carry everybody. There will still be some people, maybe they are weak, maybe they are sick, maybe some are pregnant. People who are not really useful to them, like professionals, they will not take them. So they will leave them in the land. And they will now appoint a governor over them on behalf of the one who has carried them away as captive. So they were there. So I read this story in the book of Jeremiah chapter 40. I think it's the last two or three verses. There is this governor that they put there, Gedaliah. And Gedaliah was their governor ruling over them. But security reports came to Gedaliah that there is this guy, Ishmael, he is planning to kill you. Before he kills you, let us go and kill him. As the governor, you can imagine if a security co a report comes to our governor in the States and he just says, there is nothing there, don't worry. Hey, another person came, can you see God? Another person came, that's how God keeps warning us. So he will come in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Yeah, he will, God cannot, moments of God will be anybody. He would have raised an issue. He would have tried to save us. He would have tried to correct us. So the second person came to Gedaliah in that Jeremiah chapter 40 and said, ah, why would you allow Ishmael to terminate your life? Let me go and deal with him. Ah, he said, don't worry. Don't worry about that. He makes for good reading. Let me quickly go over it. Now, he didn't allow them to kill him. But when he got to Jeremiah chapter 41, Jeremiah chapter 41, then Gedaliah came even to visit him. So in the seventh month, the Bible says, Ishmael came to Gedaliah. Ishmael appeared in person. And as he came, the Bible says in that verse one, I'm paraphrasing, he said he came with 10 men. And as he came, Gedaliah threw caution into the air and started doing hospitality. They ate, they relaxed, they ate bread. When Ishmael saw that they have let down God, when Ishmael saw that they are no longer afraid of them, the Bible says in verse 2, he arose. And the ten men that were with him and smote Gedaliah. He didn't only kill Gedaliah. He killed, he killed the, the, the people that were with him. He slew them in verse 3. He killed the Chaldeans. He killed the Jews. He killed the men of war. Eh? People that were guarding the governor, he killed all of them. Come and see verse 4. The Bible says, and it came to pass. The second day, nobody knew it. The governor had died. Nobody knew it. He left that one. That's what the devil does. When he has stolen, what does he do? He moves ahead to kill. He goes ahead again to do what? To destroy. But I now saw these three sets of people. In verse 5, the Bible says, they were coming from Shiloh. They were coming from Shechem. They were coming from Samaria. First call men, 80 men, one more than one real. They had consecrated themselves, they have shaven their beard, they have cleaned their clothes, they are, they are coming with offerings. And the Bible says they were going to the house of the Lord. They just met and they were going to the house of the Lord. And Ishmael met them. He changed his strategy again. Ah, may the Lord deliver us from evil in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is not the same way. He came, he will come to my sister, that he will come to me. And even when he comes to me the same way, it is not the same way I will fight the battle. So he came to meet them, and the Bible says as he was going, he was weeping. What can make a man to be weeping, if not deception and distraction? And as he saw them, they were looking at him. They got distracted. He said, come and see Gedaliah. Who is Gedaliah, the governor? He said, come and see Gedaliah. And I can imagine what is going on in their hand. Ah, we are going to the house of God though, but the house of God is, will always be there. Let's just quickly go and see the governor. It will be another opportunity for us to see who the governor. If I can take a photograph with the governor, I'll take it home. I will say on my trip to the house of God, I met with the governor on the way. 80 of them, they followed him. And as they got into the city, the Bible says, in the midst of the city, he started killing them one after the other. And I was wondering, why they giving him his neck, their necks like that? He killed them. But I was happy in verse 8. 
The Bible says, but there were ten among them that said, slay us not. Slay us not. We have treasures in the field of wheat, of barley, of oil, and of honey. They spoke out. They were not keeping quiet. And they said, we have some. We cannot just die like any other person. I am praying for us that in a situation where we may have been swept off our feet, you know, to go away in distract with distraction or deception, may we remember who we are. May we remember who God has called us to be. May it carry weight. May it matter to us. May our righteousness pave way, even at such times, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, he couldn't kill them, and he didn't kill them. The Lord will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said, the Lord will deliver us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Unity among us we go a long way to make us become more empowered even to do things for God. Unity in the family, unity between husband and wife, unity between parents and children, unity in the church, in various groups. When we are not united, uh, we hinder the flow of the anointing of God. When you begin to see people gossiping about one another, people talking about one another, we hinder even the power, even that is supposed to be there. Was it not in the book of Philippians that Paul was saying, I beseech Sintic and Judas, is it in chapter 4, that they settle the disagreement between them. So if you are still among us, and you are fighting, and you are quarreling, even with somebody, how shall we stand as a unit and be empowered to overrun this land? I remember Baba Deboy, uh, Baba Bada in those days. He was preaching in one of his crusades. Then the word of the Lord came. He said, help me to tell those two women in the kitchen that they should settle their quarrel now. Maybe the power of God was coming. And he just said, let them settle it now, now, now. Unity. The Bible says one will chase a thousand, two will put ten thousand to flight. So if, even if you are, it is between you and your husband, and you are harboring grudge, harboring uh, whatever, and you are not united, how shall, they have, how shall we be able to achieve any purpose for God? Some of us unite with our children against their father. Some of us pitch tents with one child against the others because he's doing well. That one is doing well. All of them are committed into our hands. God will show us mercy. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Let me end it with this testimony. I have, there was a day I went to Lagos to go and pick my husband at the airport. And as we were going, I went with our second son. And as we were going, I got to toll gates. Then my phone rang. It was not my husband's number, but it was his voice. And he said, where are you? He's like, Ibolewa. Ah. And I was wondering in my heart, what manner of salutation is this? I thought they said absence makes the heart grow fonder. Since he has gone these days, should he not be desiring to see me? Ah. I said, so what is this? <laughs> then the phone you know, went off. I said, did he hang up on me? Did he hang up on me? So to help my own heart, I said, Aboya credits in it, son. It must have been that the credits. <laughs> I said, because if I follow the thoughts of he hung up on me, so many other thoughts, you know, we pile on it, and I'm still driving. So we shall have got to the, but I knew that there is problem <laughs> waiting for me. So when I got to the airport, he looked like the plane came in earlier. So, and somebody like my husband, he does not like waiting for somebody at all. You can wait. Eh? If he's to come by six, you, can be, you must be there by five. But if <laughs> he is to come by six, I mean, if you are the one that is to come by six, he doesn't have to get there on time. No, think about it. So, when I now got there, I discovered that people have left, but I still made effort to go inside. The other security people, they say, I'm playing it today. But we want to lock. I say, Baba, let me see and see. Maybe he's waiting for me, you know, encouraging myself. When I got inside, lo and behold, nobody. Hmm. Then as we were going back to the car park, our son said, so mommy, what will happen? I was begging God for my life. 
I was begging God for the boy because I don't even know how to respond and I don't want to discourage him. So I was just saying, God, just help me at this matter, at this moment. The boy said, he has gone, Abby. Ah. I called his line. He didn't, there was no response. So I started praying. So the boy now said, so mommy, what will you do now? I said, you see, we will go to the car. You know, we brought our food. So we will sit down, we will eat, we will drink cold water. You know, I was just talking. I said, we will drink cold water, and then we will take our journey back to Abe Okuta. But a part of me was saying, ah, how many wives do this kind of thing? To travel all the way. He didn't even ask whether there was something that got wrong with the car. He didn't even say anything. How could he just take a decision like that? As he started going back home, we prayed and prayed for him wherever he could be. Then people called me from home. They said, Mommy, where are you? Daddy has arrived. I said, She has gotten home. Thank God. So we picked our journey. But as we were going on the way, I just looked at the boy. I said, A scripture has come now. Scripture only in one Waluru called Jason. I said, A scripture has come now. Is there which scripture? I said, Philippians 4 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I said, No, it is the amplified version that is that is active, I mean, that is coming up to my heart. And in Philippians 4.13, Amplified Version says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and I am equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. So the boy looked at me and said, eh, what, what is it? I said, ah, if this is the way he wants to play it, I am ready for it. If he chooses the another way, I am also equal to it. He says, so you are not angry again? I said, I'm not angry. I said, I'm not angry. So we started singing, we started talking, we came home. When I got home, I saw my husband lying down on the couch because I went with the room key. I carried the food he would have eaten to Lagos. <laughs> I did everything. So there was no way he could enter the room. So I greeted him, he didn't answer. Ah. So I opened the room, tidy everybody in the, in the house. Then he called somebody to go and bring my dress, you know, from the room into the second city room. Ah, ole <laughs> toy. You know, he slept. Then I started looking at him. As I was looking at him, the Holy Spirit said, Oti re, he is tired. That was what I was seeing. And that was a help because the scripture has already come. There is, the, there is a strength that God will infuse into you that will give you strength. You will be ready for anything in your place of work. If your boss says, Mofek Belos, okay, I am ready for it. What happens again? You are equal to it because it is the Lord that infuses strength into us. So after some time, I had the knock on the room door. I said, who is it? It was my son. In a sense, Daddy is calling you. You know Kosija? So when I now came, I said, he said, eh, maybe, because he normally calls that boy my boyfriend. He said, eh, maybe your boyfriend wants to show you what uh, is your own, what he bought for, what I bought for him. So the boy showed me, ah, I said, thank you, sir. He said, eh, maybe he also wants to show you what is in that nylon bag. So when I opened it, I saw that it was mine. I knelt down, said, thank you, sir. <laughs> After some time, he now said, eh, eh, wisdom. It would be nice if somebody can see rice to eat, especially when somebody is hungry like this. <laughs> I said, I will not cook fresh rice, so I brought the father to Lagos. Let me go and warm it, and then you eat it. So I warmed the father. Chamagoti did let you shoot, he ate the father. And then we parked. By the time I came back to the city room, what did I say about that? What did I say about that? My father called as he were coming. He said, she could see if you like a young job. When I said he has come, but I've not seen him. The people in the house, everybody became worried. They were angry on my behalf. But the meeting one janitor, I am okay. Watch your heart. Do you not know what happened? He had a meeting the following day in Lagos, and we followed him. And I sat down, my husband was preaching and was telling them, he said, some of you women, your husband will do one thing. You said you want to pack out of the house. How can you pack? Let somebody give me Philippians 4.13. Philippians 4.13. Eh? The boy now looked at me and said, Mommy, have you told him? I said, told him what? 
He said, the Philippians 4.13 that we were reading yesterday, ah, I said, we have not had time to talk. It would have been in that place that I would be receiving my correction if I had uh, uh, not acting even to the Holy Spirit. He said, make up your mind. If your husband says, Parker, you tell him, I am not packing out of this house. I have been sent into your life and I will stay. As for helping you, I will help you and I will not miss heaven. He said, your boss, and he was giving several examples. I said, huh? Are you, li <laughs> are you listening? Uh -huh. Of course, if I had shared it with some people, they say nonsense. I said, but that is not we read in scripture. Challenge will come to come and find out what is in your heart. Let it not be that in that day it is rottenness and anger and malice, something that will disappoint God that will come out. I am praying for us that the Lord will help us to be children. What is it in English? Children that God can rejoice over, that we become a, a, a delight to him. Somebody that God can be proud of in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Am I saying we will get there in one day? No. But as we keep moving on and God comes to check and test us and prove us and we see, ah, then keep working on yourself until we finish the race in joy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let the enemy cut you short. Make up your mind that you will allow the dealings of the Holy Spirit so that you can be a witness because whatever you pass through, God will use you to help other lives even with it. May the Lord show us mercy and make us useful vessels in his hand in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I will stop here because we are supposed to have questions and answers. Abby? Can I? Go ahead. Ma, me and my husband are living together. So at the time she's if he's got his clothes, his clothes. I will carry it and pack it. The second time I, I, I will carry it and pack it. But at times, you know, human beings, that nature will come and say, ah, Daddy. I should see my boy, you call CB, I think you His response is, I will leave the room for you. Anytime I complain, that is the response. I will leave the room for you. I, I said to where? Thank God we have only three rooms in this, in this house. Children are using two. We are using one. And any small question like this, you say, you, will, you are leaving the room. I said, it means you are leaving the house. He will, she will not talk. What, what, what will be my response all that time? Because that has been our major problem. Scattering the clothes on the floor. Parking is anywhere, anytime I complain, the answer is I will leave the room for you. So, what is your question? So, what is your question, ma'am? Okay. Ah. What should I be doing now if I see the clothes on the gun? Ah. Should I not complain again? Praise the Lord. I will, buy, I will help mommy to expand it beyond what she has said. He scatters his clothes, Abby, and you arrange it. After some time, you get tired, and when you talk, he will say he will leave the room for you. I'm sure, mommy, sit down. If we ask all of us, there will be a scenario that looks similar to your own in our own homes. It may not have to do with arrangement of things. It may have to do with something else. Because all of us are not the same. And if we go by what God has said in bringing husband and wife together, we were removed even from them. And what has been removed has become a strength in you and has created a weakness even in him. I want us to do whatever God wants us to do in our home with joy. The Bible says if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. I was in a meeting like this too. One woman was complaining that the husband, when he uses the restroom, he doesn't flush. He does not flush. And when he says it, she will not just flush. He can flush, no. He just so, 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 so. Abi, will you leave it like that? You will still go and flush. Please don't be tired, don't be weary of doing well. One of these days, all that you are doing, hmm, 
we, you think he's not noticing it. It may not even be in him, even to do it. Like I was telling some young people, he said, ah, I know this, I said, you don't know anybody. Do you know whether this one, when he's sleeping, he snores? Snoring, seriously, that time at the bend, it won't change again. You even need earpiece. He said, ah, I cannot even marry somebody like that. I said, do you know whether this one does not know how to keep the house? Because you don't know anybody from afar like that until you come close, even to them. I want you to know, Ma, that that's one of the reasons why God sent you into his life. There are some things that he will be doing that you also are not doing. There are things that you are doing and do very well that he may not even do at all. I remember I had the testimony of a man that it's the man that is arranging. It is the wife that is littering everywhere. Is it not funny? You were in Bible study one time in church and one man said, ah ah, can you come to wardrobe? Can you come to daru? Eh? Oh yeah, can you bar our sorrow? <laughs> and somebody said, eh, ah, ni ne I want to talk about the daru ko, loan daru, and it is the, a woman. So you now see that in this house, it is the man. In this other, I mean, it's a woman. In this house, it is the man. I used to behave like that too. I would travel, my husband would be asking me, calling me, nibo ni belt, ni wa. And I would say, sha john lo ni. That's what we come to my house. Sha ji john lo belt ni ek ba ni. Are you getting me? Why any bolo wa me rini? You bolo man ko go go I won't every kaki rini bolo fisi. I will now say, okay, and we'll be timo hangers, okay, moti rio she. Until the Lord made me to know that when he needs help, I should rise up and help. Then I changed my prayers. And the prayers I normally pray for myself is may I be needed. May the help in me be called for on a daily basis. That is what will make him to look at me and thank God that I am a favor sent into his life. Why will I be dodging things that are expected of me? There are some things, people that when you, they were removing you from your husband, it is maybe 70, 30, some 90, 10, some 0, 100. There are some things that they will not even know how to do. And it is not a single one fish car. It is not just in there. And you can know how to do it very well. Then go ahead and do it. Do it with joy, that's why you are there. So where he is weak, then you will have the strength. I, I used to say that Bob cannot go off in my house. And you see my husband climbing. Oh, my name is Latifari Electrician. Electrician, Lati change the bulb. Because my father will not do that. But I didn't marry my father. Even up till now, he won't do it. But for somebody like me, I can put stool on a chair and send me to hold it very well and change the bulb. Is it not just for the bulb to be changed? Eh? You will not even see my husband go near generator. It is recently that you understand what I'm saying? It is not as if some people, it is, they are not wired even to do that. And I've seen a couple before, he will complain. And they still have to blend together. So that is your own man. The testimony of somebody that I had, it was the husband that was doing it. So Jock on Konya what day, who will go laying about Inu Debi. Holy Spirit now said, Arrange it. Arrange it. He used to wait for the wife to come and arrange it. He said, Arrange it for her and keep doing it. Then the man started doing it. The man started doing it. After one day, he was now to come home. The wife said, Hey, my husband is coming. She just suddenly went to pack all those things. The husband was surprised. But they lay, oh, they, oh, they banning me more. A time we come. When people will be saying the two of you have become one, you will now see that what used to be in this one, what you are rub on this other one. Don't complain, do it with joy. It is the reason why you are there. It will also be able to stand in for you in the area of your weakness in another way. It is not happening like that in every home. In every home, they have their own too. Are you getting? They have their own. They are, when they say, you say, eh, ah, tile what you da, eh, everybody will carry their own. Be a help, a correct help. And as you keep it, so people why they or get them? Go back to change it, man. I said, just I said, what did you throw it on the floor? Any am I supposed to be one my one? Any to my pack? She bought my berry, but the person didn't see anything <laughs> wrong in that. But I was on it. I went ah ah. In your dad now, but when you hear their own, you will say actually, eh, my husband has tried. He's even better. So do it with joy. 
do it prayerfully. One of these days, God will see it, and then he will also join you, or even do it on your behalf, or look for helper who will be able to help you to do it. God will help us in Jesus' name. One of these days, he will be praising you, say, my wife, he will be praising you for who you are. You will be competing with one another. God will help us in Jesus' name. God will help us. Amen. Any other questions? Is it written? Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, you talked about... Uh, Knowing our purpose. Knowing our purpose as a woman. You, you said our purpose, why we are, why we are a woman. Because I was here on Thursday, you talked that uh, we should ask questions why we, are, we get married. We should ask questions why we have children. We should ask questions why we are into the business that we are into. Now, for someone that does not have that understanding, does that, does not, that does not have that understanding initially, that does not, that does not ask questions. I just believe that, okay, one has to get married, one has to have children, one has to have a job. And along the line, things are not really working out. All those things, like, like there's no purpose. So how, how do one go back to have that purpose? That's okay. my question. There is no time we go to God and he will send us away. The Bible says, those who come to God, he will in no wise cast out. Even all these things that we are talking about, nobody knows it overnight. We go into it, we respond, and then we grow into it. And you see, this God is a faithful God. He can cut so many things short in righteousness. There are people who were married, not even as believers. And then they come in contact with the power of God and then they give, give their life to Christ. And they hand over their home, even unto God. And God took it and is helping them on. So God is the one who orders our lives. He can rewrite people's story. He can do anything if we are sincere coming to him. So if it looks as if there is no purpose that was well spelled out when we were getting married, we just saw somebody whom we like or we love and then we got married to one another. Which one is the purpose that they are talking about now? And then we don't understand. And then you now begin to carry the matter even to God. As you begin to pray, you will see God responding and he will channel, you know, your movement and your direction if it is a sincere prayer. I was talking to one of the brothers in the house before I left. He said, Mommy, I used to cancel or correct sisters. Uh, and uh, I now discover that it's like I want to correct them so that they will be in my own mold as I want it, as I want them to be. And it's not as if there is any relationship in them. He said, Suddenly I stopped. Will you say it is God that made me to stop? Or I stopped myself? I said, It can be God. Because the Bible says he is the one that causes us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. There are some things that has never crossed your mind before, no desire or nothing, but God can sponsor it into your heart. And you can just begin to like it or begin to stop, I mean, you can stop doing such a thing. God can work on us. There is nothing he cannot do. He can pick up on our emotional life, he can pick up on anything, and he change it and to suit the purpose. I know even told us that you don't have a purpose. God who has seen ahead of time, he knows what he will make out of your life. Let me tell you the story of Dadiade uh, Boye. Uh, By the time he married mommy, whose birthday incidentally is today, may God bless her in Jesus' name, he, he, he was still having girlfriends. And mommy happened to be one of them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he said he wanted to uh, shortlist and make sure he settles down with one. He now gave all of them different birthday dates. Tomorrow, this particular day is my birthday, so that they can bring gifts. All of them were coming, they were bringing gifts. He said, but when mommy was coming, mommy bought Bible and white handkerchief. Ah, he said, this one that has bought Bible and white handkerchief, would have been 
Those are the things that God used to persuade his heart. And he married and he, he chose mommy alone. But look at them today. Are you listening? So there is no point at which God will write anybody off if we are sincere and we come to him, especially if you do it together. If as a wife is seeing it, carry the matter to God and God also persuade the heart of the husband and say, we did not know anything when we got married, but now, Lord, guide our hearts, guide our path, show us the reason why we have come together. Will God not answer? He will answer and he will show and he will also empower even for you to do. God will help us in Jesus' name. But when we feel, ah, motishi, modetishi, not near, then that means we are not ready to receive even what God is saying. So as the husband is praying, the wife is also praying to confirm whatever the Lord has told the husband, to confirm, I mean, to support the husband. There are even people who even are married in church and everything. They have even had, but they follow their feelings and everything like that. There are people who are married whose husband does not even have any bearing or decision or direction. One of the ways by which the wife will help the man is to help the man to get focus. All your prayer will be, Lord, let him be focused, let him get it right, and God will be confirming what he wants to do even in your, you pray him into getting to where he's supposed to be. You also pray him so that he can sit among the elders in the gates where the position is already vacant. That is the reason why the help you will render in the life of your husband may be different from mine. There are some general helps that is common to everybody, but there are specific help that God is waiting on us even to do in the life of the man he allowed us to marry. May we, again, not disappoint him in the name of the Lord Jesus. And it is as he fulfills purpose that we also find our own fulfillment. Amen. I don't know. Is it okay, ma? Okay. Okay, we have a question here. Praise the Lord, ma. Praise the Lord. Okay, yes. Thank ma. you, ma. Um, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, ma. Thank you very much. Um, the issue we have, especially as elderly women, when you want to cancel some of these young ones, and um, especially when young, um, I can't call them boys, those that are becoming men are there, and you are trying to talk to them generally that this is the way to go, this is the way to hold your family. And some of them will say, Oma Atijoleni. That word, Oma Atijoleni, I wish we can just put it in the heart of our young ones. Is it not the same woman that I am, that you are? So what made me Oma Atijo? That is making you the new Gen Z now. That you are now calling yourself Oma Isi. So, Oma Isi at Oma Atijo, what is the difference? And how do we really convince them? Because when they are, their mind is made up, they just keep on telling you, eh, Mommy, it's not like the way you are looking at it. I remember there was a time um, a seminar was held for the young ones, and they had a lot of complaints. Even on when your husband says you should grind pepper with um, stone or law, they said, eh, lie, lie, how can I? But I said, if the man is coming from a place where the mother sometimes do spoil them with that, there is nothing bad in you learning it. They said, Rara, oh, mommy, we, we are not. I don't know. God will help us. And I know you will have one or two things to tell the young ones. So please hold on, for God has something for them. Thank you, ma. Amen. Thank you, ma. Of course, if we back up to our own days of growing too, I'm sure we may not have said it like that to our parents. But there are times in those early days when we were growing that we look at our parents as if they are old and they don't know. Especially those who do not come from background where parents are born again. We may even feel they don't know, they don't understand where we are going. And I can imagine what will be going on even in their hearts. So I even have compassion for the younger ones of nowadays. 
because the devil is growing more wickedly and he knows that his time is short and is contending seriously even for them and is it coming too much for them because of what they are hearing what they are hearing in those days when we gave our life to call to, to christ there were few places where you can hear the word of god you take it hook line and sinker because of conversion with conviction that we had you wanted to follow the lord anything that they say god has said you want to tie it your heart life to it and go but these days what they are hearing are messages of easy things take it like this all this uh, uh, fast fast fasting fast food drive through drive through banking drive through fast food many of them also want to drive through to heaven do everything like that so they have heard so much they are not only listening to us they have heard so much and what can change that is still our prayers primarily is also the word of god that god must also give them encounter when god gives them encounter he delivers them from wrong doctrine and then we don't get angry with them because they are not even seeing what you are saying they heard you but they are not seeing so it's only God that can open their eyes of understanding. And when he gives them encounter, they will not be running around with form without denying the power. You know, there is, there's a form of godliness that denies the power. Every one of them will be following us, doing what we are doing, doing what they will say which they should do. But they don't have, they don't have the power that is behind it because they are not in contact even with the Lord that we are serving. I'm also begging us as older women that you don't hold, you don't hold the experiences and the encounters that we have. Share with them. Let them know what you are passing through and what you have passed through so that it will register that somebody has passed through this. But prayerfully handle them. Pray for them and teach them. Pray for them and teach them. And we need to be patient with them because the one who is dealing with them is not taking it lightly. What's he but, but, I mean, bombarding one, many, many things that are heretic. So you cannot just come with one statement, they will wave it off and feel that, no, you don't understand what you are saying. They will show you examples of where it is thriving. So you really need an encounter. So if you have not been so much prayerful before, pray that the God of this world that has blinded their eyes, their mind, we take off his hands so that people can hear God, that they will have encounters with God. We still have remnants among these young people whose hearts are panting after God. Those are the people that we should show them as example. Those are the people that we can connect them with, who will share life experiences with them. But if you react on the basis of what they have said, they want you to shut up. They don't want to say anything. So, but, and we are saying we should love them. We should allow them to talk. We should allow them to share with us. As they are sharing with us, you are picking prayer points. As you are sharing, they are sharing with you, you are asking God for what to use to answer them. And the word of God is what can tra really transform them. Because mm, the contention is much. Of course, we will hear that old school. And I keep telling them that the word of God can never, never be outdated. The word of God is relevant to any generation. Even if we still live here on earth for the next 1,000 years, the word of God will still be the word of God. So in simple, simple matters, we can still let them put God, you know, ahead. Let them allow God to work on their life. Pray that they will have encounter that they will not be able to recover from. Pray for them because the one that is contending with them wants us to also give up. He wants us to get tired. He wants us to get frustrated. So it's like a two-edged sword that the devil is using to fight. He wants to catch them and he wants you to get weary. So don't be weary in well-doing. Saturate their lives with prayers. And God will show us what we need to do. God can magnify you ma, in their sight. God can reveal some things to you. That by, when, by the time you tell them, they quiver. They will say it's only God that can do this. By the time they begin to see that you have an experience and they walk with God, you will be honored even with them. But tobacco and suffering more, and back on, back on, back on, they can despise it. They can despise it. But prayerfully present the word of God before them. It does not mean that it's immediately that they will get it. But when you don't give up on them, 
When you don't give up on them, you will discover that you will be able to snatch them from the hand of the devil. The way some of them would even say is so annoying, very annoying, and that's what the devil wants. He does not want you to handle them. He wants you to leave them alone and pack them aside so we cannot. But when we are seeking the face of the Lord, God, ow! The Bible says a wise man scales the city. The strategy to catch one may be different from the one you will use to catch the other because they are different. So as you begin to pray, God will give you the wisdom. He will give you the mouth. He will give you what to say. This one that we are talking of prayer and fasting too, it's not too much if we fast over them and then we come with the word of the Lord. You don't know which of these that God will ride on to enter into their heart. And once you can harvest one, you harvest more, you begin to relax because they will be able even to walk among themselves. The devil does not want them at all. So we deal with the devil in the place of prayer. We present the word of God. Sometimes we elderly ones too, it is advice that we bring. When you do it, go, it is not going to come out well. All those words are not empowered to change anybody. So if you are going to bring out the word of God, receive the bread, give it to them, preach it, repeat it, tell them, and then pray. We will be encouraged because God is a prayer answering God. He honors such burdens. Maybe that's why we are here, so that you can pick burdens for this Gen Z, so that they will not be lost. So that a generation will not arise after us that do not know the Lord. Let's share with them experiences and things and how God has delivered people before. I want to believe that they will be recovered, even for God. When they have praying mothers, when they have preaching mothers, when they have teaching mothers, even as, and we know that the men too are saying it among themselves, that they will not allow their position to be vacant. They will be able to speak. I don't know how Noah did it and his wife in their own generation when the whole world went against God and he was able to harvest his own sons and the sons married sisters who could also believe even in the God of the family. So these are examples in the Bible that will encourage us that we should not give up at all. We should not give up at all. Keep committing them into the hands of God. Do whatever the Holy Spirit prompts you even to do and love them. When they see that you love them passionately, they will tilt towards you. And I know that when you are praying for somebody, God will open the door of ministry for you in the life of that person and will be able to recover them for God. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This question says, please, ma, I'm not asking question, but wish to suggest that churches should please be organizing programs for our men too, so that our prayers can be answered in time. What I discovered is that men hate to be corrected by their wives. Thanks, ma. Where do I start? Let's keep praying. And God is answering our prayers in gathering men. You see, the devil does not also want men to occupy their correct position. Are you getting what I'm saying? So as we keep praying, I know that it will be done. Even some of them, when they come for meeting, have you not seen couples, attending couples meeting before? And by the time you say, thank God for today, can't you discuss? In show did you not hear when they are saying, wives, submit? Submit yourself to your own husband. That's what he had. <laughs> so even when they are having meetings, we should be praying that they will hear what they are saying. Because there is an enemy that does not want even the person preaching to do what he is saying. So we need prayer. If you know the orchestration of the devil. If you know that the devil also knows that when you know the word of God, you can be free. He does not want them to hear what will make them free. So instead of condemning them or looking down on them, pray, encourage, do everything that you can do to ensure that they come in contact with the word of God and encourage them then. Now, as a wife <laughs> and that has authority over you. You are not giving permission 
under God to just go ahead and correct your husband. A subordinate pleads even with an authority over. That's why God has given us opportunity and grace to pray. Because if a man does something wrong and you come and say, eh, <laughs> see what you have done. I remember those days when I was still foolish. My husband would pr preach and I would say, ah, thank God. So I thought that about the daily by. Eh, I will now see that we are back to old Kini. Ah, Mawani, any badake, Tari Abadake, Abi, Basheman Sonny, and all the people that you preach this thing, they are coming back to share testimony. But I'm not seeing this thing being done in our household. Hey, Ego, Yatua, Atua did this. One of these days, I cried out to Sister Shade Akon, and I said, ah, Amy will read it, say, your mama, preach to mama. Ah, Sister Shade said, there is an enemy that does not want even the preacher to be a doer of the word of God. He said, when he is preaching, he's under the grace and anointing of God. He's saying the correct thing, but it does not mean that it's automatic for him to do it. He said, as he's preaching it, you'll be begging God and say, oh Lord, don't let him just be saying it. Let him be a doer in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let, don't use him, you know, to be correcting other lives and his own life will be a castaway. He, she taught me how to pray that prayer. Then I stopped complaining. I stopped complaining. There are many other things like that I say, ah, eh, ha. I don't know. We, 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 when we were two, my husband will call me, we'll be praying, speaking in tongues. He taught me how to pray, you know, uh, in tongues for six hours, for clinical hours, even before we got married. I was married. People have started living with us almost a day and call us together for morning devotion. Odi Wahala. Are you getting me? So I'll be wondering. He told me, my name is Eshe. Me, she. Ah, is he not a pastor? Is he not supposed to be the one to direct us? So in the morning, sometimes I want to call. And even when he comes out, sometimes he will sleep. And I felt this is wrong. I cried to mommy in camp. Mommy said, ah, Ibi Gogolatin Kadi Yale. Eh, eh? Ibi Gogolatin Kadi Yale. Shekpe, you went through this kind of eh, situation too. Mofara Balegbo. He said, you see? Daddy, daddy, but you know, a mini pastor, he said, sit down on the people that God has brought to you as members and begin to do your own and begin to do your own and begin to. We raise it again when we went for family retreats with Brother Gwile and uh, Sasha Day. Then my husband now said, What she does not understand is that I don't have the patience of those children. When I see her do it, ah. I praise her because me, I don't have the patience. You know, when he said that statement, a scenario flashed back in my head. And the scenario is that, eh, will Jesus give us biscuits? Only will you keep quiet and let us. <laughs> the child evangelist in me rose and I said, Jesus will give us biscuits. But you see, before he give us biscuits, he says we should do this, we should, he will give us biscuits, he will give us chocomilo, he will give us this. Then, Kenny Ewa died down, the joint. Then I now remember that my own background is different from his own. I was taken through exposures and experiences for, a, for such a time like this. But if you come to our house now for devotion, I will need to raise up my hand. And my husband can say no, he can call me, he may not call me. You would think we started like that. So there are some exposures you have had that is meant to help the home, help the man. So you, when you want to correct him, and even if he's doing something wrong, go to his head, plead. If the Lord permits you to say it, he will tell you how to say it. If the Lord does not permit you, don't just open your eyes and go and say it because he may throw it back even at you. God will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Please, women, women leaders, they are also begging us to organize this kind of program for men so that it will not be only us that are hearing. Who even knows whether God wants to use you as a program in your home? That it is your life that your husband will read and then there will be a change. May we continually be a help in the name of the Lord Jesus. May the hammers come quickly and come fast so that we can be correct and be useful in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Yeah, I should have gone in there.
Can we rise up to pray? So much has been taught us today. Though our prayer time is short, but then within five minutes, I would like to recap it so that you have something. You may have said, mommy has said a lot of things. God has told us that we have mandate to, mandate to fulfill. That we are created to express God. That the same way Paul was set apart, God has set us apart. Jesus also came as human being. He knew his purpose and he fulfilled it. The same way we are to fulfill our own purpose. But we were reminded that Jesus was empowered. So this meeting is all about repositioning us to do his will and to attain the higher position that God has prepared for us. We were also reminded that there is a pathway to follow. But they told us that uh, we are to make disciples of all the nations. And the amplifiers said, train them, train them. But we are also reminded that we cannot witness to people until we ourselves have experienced some things. So that we have something to share, even from our lives. That which we have seen, that which we have touched. We were told that Jesus Christ did not just arrive and then died. He, the process he passed through, due process, we also need it too. Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. We were told that growth is a necessity. To achieve all that we have been told for the past three days, growth is a necessity. We must increase in the knowledge of God. And of course, that the advertisements have been, placed, have been placed. God is looking for the person to use. She's looking for a woman, and you and me are present here. So God is actually, but, and that there is something that will qualify us. It's, it is spiritually declined, uh, designed to qualify for what God is looking for. Salvation, growth, life of purity, growth in the knowledge of God. And of course, brokenness. Where the minister of God dwells on so much. And several issues, several uh, agents of transformation that the Lord will use to break us as, the, as a hammer. The word of God, our husbands, our children, at workplace, our in-laws, and the need for us not to dodge dealings. I think this key scripture that really touched me personally is that first King chapter 6 verse 7. That when the temple was being built, the stones that were used had been worked upon in the quarry. They were just perfectly fitted. No noise, nothing. And there is noise all about us today. Noise in the family, noise everywhere. Look at your life. Let's rise up to talk to God this morning. Is there no noise in your home? Is there no noise in your families? At workplace? In the life of your children? Because maybe we have Dutch preparations. What will have qualified us to stand and produce virtues that will touch other lives? Can we ask for grace this morning afresh? Because the Bible says of his fullness, we all have received and grace for grace. Can we beg God for greater grace? Grace to fulfill our mandates. Grace to fulfill our mandates. Lord, please help us. I was telling my sister who sat beside me, I said God must have seen something in our lives. Because if you look at the past few two months, this message has been coming to us repeatedly. Let's plead with God to help us to mature. Let's beg God to help us to rise up to our responsibilities. Let's pray for grace not to fail him. Lord, please help us. Lord, please help us. 
We have come to the throne of grace this morning. We cannot say we have not had. We, have not, we cannot say we have not seen life. We have passed through what we are going through. But we have seen lives who have stayed through and passed. Lord, help us too. Lord, let your grace attend to us. Let grace attend to us to do the needful. Let grace attend to us not to fail you. Let grace attend to us not to fail our generation. Lord, Lord, please help us. Oh, please help us. I don't know whether you have passed all these things, but me have not passed everything. I need greater grace. There is this ayak, ayak calling upon me. Oh Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. I must not fail you. Lord, have mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We were told that we need to grow in the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of God. Growth is a necessity. That means we must seek the Lord. We must seek him in the word. We must be the student of his word. Look at the examples our mommy gave us. You will see that each time, the word of God will come to her. And that was what delivered her. And for the men of old, men that we are reading about in the Bible, what delivered them? What made them who they were? What made them to stand out? Was the fact that the word of God came to them. But if the word has never come to you, if you are not the student of the word, so what, what will now come to you? Suggestion of friends will come to you. What you have watched in the home theater will come to you. Could you like to pray for grace to give attention to the word of God like never before? That the word of God will be our delight. It will be what we spend our time to, 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 to work upon every day. In the name of Jesus, that a day will never pass without you reading the word, without you meditating on the word. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we are at a time where women's heart are encumbered so much that they cannot give attention to the word of God again. It is easier today to discuss with friends, to discuss current issues, trending issues, even when you have not looked at the word of God. It is easier even for women to go to mountains where they will come back with nothing without the word of God. Oh, Father, please help us. Help us to give attention to your word. Make us students of the word. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, grace to sit with your word. Grace to meditate on your word. Oh, God, grace to delight myself in your word. Lord, release to me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The issue of agent of transformation, that hammer, that hammer that must be used on us so that what is in us, what is inside of us, we come out. We cannot dodge it. We cannot dodge it. We cannot dodge it. And I heard when it was said that the earlier we surrender, the earlier we submit to God's dealing, the better for us. Otherwise, time we waste, our space we waste, spaces that we ought to occupy, time we ought to spend to do good things, to express God, we pass away, and yet we will not have achieved anything. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Can we pray for grace to stand? The Bible says if we fail in the day of adversity, you say your strength is small. Grace to stand in the days of adversity. Grace to face life challenges without deviating from God. Oh, grace to allow God to use that whatever armor it is that God will want to use on us. Grace to stand. Grace to bear it. Can we pray for it?